a little boy that uh, uh, was born, grew up in the family and never said a word, never spoke, didn't say a word. Uh, and they thought he had a physical condition, but it wasn't. He just, just didn't speak. And then one day he was about five years old and he, they were at supper and he threw his fork down and said, these beans are awful. <laughs> and his parents were just thrilled that he spoke and said, said, Johnny said, why, why, why haven't you said anything all these years? And he said, he said, everything's been all right up to now. <laughs> okay. Bad joke. But uh, it, it's almost like everything was going along really well. We think, we think we had a lot of rough times and difficult things and all this. And then we get into this crisis, this situation. And it's like, well, well, what's going on here? Uh, what, what's the deal? And it, it made me think of something that, uh, that happens often in crisis or tragedies or, uh, or uh, loss or disruptions of any kind. We begin to doubt God's goodness. We just doubt how good God is. And, and we turn on this thought, and, and you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. It's like we get this attitude, well, what have you done for me lately? You know, as good as God is and as, as, as blessed as we are and as, as, as faithful as God is, it's easy to start flipping that switch and just saying, now, wait a minute, what have you done for me lately? And we begin to complain. We begin to, begin to look on, on the downside. And that is just natural. That is, of course, that's natural. I mean, life happens and we get disappointed and bad things happen to good people. And, and we wonder and, and we, we have doubt and, and doubts are not all that bad they, they cause us to struggle and that's a good thing that's that's the story of uh, Jesus speaking to Thomas uh, let's deal with those doubts let's just confront them that's okay but but it's when we get into that mindset that um, you know what have you done for me lately as if we are entitled or we're owed or or why don't we why don't why is it this happening or that happening I, I came across uh, five words actually actually six words reading the other day i was, I was reading in ephesians and I just I, I got this far in the verse it's ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and i got this far and those six words and i just stopped right there uh, but god being rich in mercy <laughs> i just stopped right there and i thought god being rich god being rich in mercy uh, when you think about rich what do you think about you think about being able to do what you want to do you have you have plenty you have abundance you have uh, uh you have wealth you have assets you can do what you want to do uh, you, you think about being rich uh it, it's a it, it's a good place to be but it's a it's a place that you understand okay i've, I've got what is adequate I, I have more than adequate uh, I, i'm able to do just about anything i want to do uh, and just Contrast that with scarcity or, or, or meagerness or, or being poor or, uh, or destitute or needy or lacking. And, and we realize when, when that happens, when, when we're not, we don't feel so rich, we don't feel so blessed, we don't feel like everything is, is going our way and the beans are awful, you know, and all of a sudden we just say we've got to speak up or something. It's like, no, wait a minute. What? what? Let's put this in perspective. What, why do we, what, what happens to us? Well, our pastor yesterday at uh, First Church shared a wonderful message from First Peter and uh, went along with the, the thought I, I was developing over this last week. And I want to bring in First Peter 1, uh, verses 3 uh, and 4. Let me just share this with you. First Peter 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be the God of our Father and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Okay. <laughs> you, get, you remember the context of 1 Peter writing to folks who were facing serious persecution uh, because of Jesus, because of who they were and, and what uh, they, they professed in the midst of a very pagan and, and angry uh, society that uh, had no use for 
the types of things that they would do and, and, and believe and profess. And, and so Peter writes this, this powerful word to them, and he starts off not saying, I understand how terrible things are. Well, it, we'll he just says, blessed be God uh, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, here's who we are. Here's who we are as, and let me put it this way, as Easter people. <laughs> we are Easter people in the fact that uh, we have been born anew with a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's just that the idea is, say, you know, God, what have you done for me lately? He said, well, let me re remind you what I've done for you. <laughs> and it's this idea that you have been born anew to a living hope, a living hope. You know, you look up at that word living throughout the New Testament and it's like Jesus has a living water. Well, water, how is, how is water, how is water alive? Uh, uh, Stephen refers to, to Moses in, in, in Acts and his, in, as Stephen is, is giving his message and he, he talks about the living word. Well, how, how is a word alive? And, uh, and then Peter, a little later in this epistle, talks about the, you are living stones. What is it about that? I mean, it's this powerful word. And then he says, but you have um, born anew to what? A living hope. So could it be that sometimes hope seems like it's inanimate, that it has no liveliness to it? You know, we have hope. We, have, we say hope. We have hope. But it could be that circumstances, it just becomes a word. And we really need to put that adjective in front of it, especially in a moment like this. Say, no, it's a living hope. It's a dynamic hope. It's a lively hope. It's not stale. It's not dry. It's not life. It's <laughs> powerful. It's a living hope. Uh, Baptist Church down in Bowling Green, where I served, uh, is is their their name is Living Hope. I thought, man, I wish I'd thought of that first. <laughs> living Hope. It's a wonderful idea. There is this living hope that is ours. It's a dynamic experience, and it's one that uh, doesn't go away. But then we. Let me just share that quickly then. Then he says that, uh, and to an inheritance, to an inheritance. Uh, Pastor Todd shared yesterday this phrase, and I thought it was a wonderful thought for us, is that inheritance is not something you, you earn. It's not something you, you, you are entitled to. It, it just all depends on whose you are, not who you are. And that's the idea about an inheritance. And it's who we are, friends, and what our inheritance is. And what's he tell about our inheritance? It's incorruptible, it's immortal, it's imperishable, it's undefiled, it's pure, it's unstained, it's unfading, it's eternal, it's permanent. Those are words we need to hear right now. We need to think on these things. We get so caught up, I think, in, in, in the reality, and it is reality, we face reality, we face, we face difficulties. But as Easter people, this is who we are, and this is what we have to share. Um, we are, are born through the resurrection of Jesus Christ um, to a living hope, uh, a, a dynamic experience, uh, not just a word, but an experience uh, that goes through every kind of situation. And um, we have this inheritance because of who we, whose we are, because of who what he's done for us, that this is our story. Uh, this is our inheritance. Uh, this is the life that we share together. So I, I just share that today. Uh, maybe I'm the only one who need to hear that. <laughs> but that word rich just stuck in my mind. I thought, absolutely, absolutely. God is that good. And we need to hold on to that thought, even in the most difficult times. It's almost like this. For every complaint that we offer up, we need to offer four words of, of praise. <laughs> for just how good God is and hang on to that and celebrate that and share that with one another. Cause there are a lot of despondent, disappointed, hurting people. And it's not tying this guy in the sweet by and by it's, it's a living hope right now. Right.